Hi everyone, thanks for watching Access Hockey MI. We've been MIA for the last couple of weeks, sorry about that, but we were getting more and more and more <laughs> hockey content for you. <laughs> we were recently at the um, NHL Prospects Tournament in Traverse City, uh, where the Red Wings faced off against eight other teams and ended up winning that championship. So that's super great, it's their second one since they've done it. <laughs> so, I mean, in 21 seasons, it's their second one, so. Yeah, it's this is about time. <laughs> no um, so today we're going to talk about a few, six in specific, um, prospects that we have in the Red Wings organization that we're really excited about that we were able to watch at this mm -hmm. tournament or watch at the tournament and training camp and kind of get some down low for you guys. Because so, we love you. Because we love <laughs> to talk about this kind of stuff. So we're going to talk about six guys and Rachel, why don't you start with the first one? First one kind of goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Joe Valeno. <laughs> I was going to say, please say it. <laughs> we can play a guessing game. Uh, Joe Valeno, he did phenomenal in the prospect tournament and training camp. He impressed everybody. Um, he walked away or skated away with seven goals throughout the tournament. But things that we really, really noticed about him playing in the prospects tournament to then playing um, with the other NHL guys in training camp was that he's got incredible hockey sense. Um, his work ethic is is just beyond you can amazing. Tell. Yeah, he, on the ice he, for he sure. works his butt off mm -hmm. every single shift, um, and he and has, he never looks tired. So I think never. he's well con he's well conditioned. Yeah, too, which is great. I don't even know if he sweats. Yeah, um, <laughs> and he's got really really good leadership too. He he's not a captain or an alternate or anything like that. But on the ice when he's when he's out there, he's helping guide the other guys, yeah. set and up plays. And a yeah. side note on that, we all know that you don't need a letter to be right. a leader. So yep. that's it's, just it's, another thing. And, and what we did notice, though, I mean, throughout, he, he obviously performed really, really well. He's an amazing pick by, by the Red Wings, and we're super excited for him. But, you know, everyone's got these few little things they got to work on. And with him, it looks like focusing a little bit more on a two-way game. Obviously, he's very offensive-minded, yeah. but and the I, way I the game is. I think he's got a good two-way game now, but I do think yeah. he needs to be more defensive. Mm -hmm. when he's you know He's always driving the net. He's mm -hmm. always trying to get points. He's setting guys up. He's yep. trying to get goals himself, but... I do think a little defense yeah. wouldn't hurt either. Well, and that that too, it's it's the the way the game is now. Every player yeah. is kind of expected to be a little bit more two way. So that's probably just it's a minor area, but and he'll he'll be able to do it easily. Yeah, for um, sure. But why don't you talk about the next one? So the next one is a quick favorite of ours, I think, yes. and it's our pick from this year, Moritz Sider. He's a defenseman. He's a big guy, and the first thing we noticed about him is he's not shy to be physical. Mm -mm. He he's physical, and that's something that I don't think I'm used to seeing too much, but he'll go in, he'll get the puck, mm -hmm. he'll make the play. He played a bunch in the prospect tournament Tons. due to a couple of injuries that were sustained in the tournament, but he was on the ice almost every other shift. And even playing in preseason so far, he's gotten more than 20 minutes in some games. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge deal, and he's getting a chance to learn alongside you know, vet defensemen, which has been really great too. In saying that, we noticed that he's also super well conditioned. He is, yes. So he, I mean, again, he didn't look tired, and I think that these guys are pretty good at not, you know, looking Showing. like they're huffing and puffing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he looked like he was pretty well mm -hmm. conditioned. He's coming from a German league, so um, also we noticed how adaptable he yeah. is to American ice. So European ice is 15 feet longer or wider. Wider. I mean, yep. so long one. <laughs> so it's 15 feet wider and he did say that of course that that makes the game much faster yeah. here but you know it's hockey at the end of the day is what you couldn't tell he was he was fresh to the U.S. ice right he just he yeah. looks like a natural out there which is super great to see and his skill level all of that to say his skill level is just it's great already which it really explains such a high pick for right. him I didn't question Eiserman's pick, I guess, and I, kind of silly. And too. after all this has been going on, we've seen a lot of news of people who were questioning this pick. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that, but <laughs> rest at ease. This guy is going to be really good yep. for us going forward. All of that awesomeness being said, we do think that he needs to work a little more on playing his position. So mm -hmm. he's super. He can be an offensive defenseman for sure because we mm -hmm. talked about how important that is. Yep. But sometimes I think he goes and drives the puck kind of, you know, has to back step a little bit mm -hmm. to get back to where he's supposed to be. But again, yeah. minor yeah. fix. And I think it probably, and just like Valeno, it comes from that mindset. They know they can get in there and get it yeah. done. So just learning to be aware. And of, of your, course, your just teammates. a disclaimer, we know that this NHL Prospects Tournament isn't like um, the end-all be-all mm -hmm. for how the season's going to go because this ice is different, you know, and yeah. it's just... 
it's you have more room in this than you would in the NHL different. and the AHL. So yeah, yeah, we understand that. So why don't you talk about the third one, Philip Larson? Um, <clears throat> he he's a goaltender now. He's gonna be starting in Grand Rapids. We did not see him in the prospect tournament at all due to a nagging injury. Very that sad. He had. We were disappointed. <laughs> really wanted we, to see. Him. Yeah, we wanted to see how he paired up against you know other prospects. But he was dur- playing during training camp. We saw him on ice every single morning doing the drills with the coaching staff. Um, and he he is an incredibly controlled goaltender. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a fantastic season once he did come back from injury with Denver University, and so it seems to have translated over there. Um, he's very very focused when he's on the ice, when he's in that neutral zone or not neutral zone, but in his zone. <laughs> he's he's not in the neutral zone. zone. <laughs> in the neutral zone. He's he's focused there. No, but in his own zone, he he knows exactly where he is at all mm-hmm. times. He's very aware of his appendages and what they're doing. And you why. can tell when a goalie is shaken, and you can. Tell yeah. They don't know where the puck is, and that's not the case with Larson, which is very encouraging mm-hmm. for um, development for the Red Wings. I'm very, it's very exciting. Yeah, and he's he's he seems right now to be reliable. Obviously, yeah. this is going to be his first pro season, and that you got to come out of the gate, especially as a goaltender. It is a very very stressful and demanding position. Yes, and everything comes you're down. You're focused to you. the entire game. You don't exactly. get a line change. You nope. you are. Constantly. Yeah. So that, that, that mental battle, I mean, that's going to be really, I mean, the area of improvement for him is something that only time will tell. You know, out of these games that he's going to be playing in Grand Rapids and tandeming with uh, Kelvin Picard, Yes. What? How? How? That? How? That's going to translate? And, and how that'll be great be. because Picard is um, a vet goalie, yep. and I think he can teach him a lot. And of course, the Red Wings are in preseason right now, so he's learning alongside, mm-hmm. you know, Jimmy Howard, Bernier as well. Mm-hmm. So it's very encouraging. Yep. So number four would be Philip Sedina, which is a pick from us last year, and a lot of people are super excited for um, his development. Yes. And he was supposed to be, you know, the one to save us. And as much as we all would like one player to save us, it's just not going to happen. It's not how it works. It's just it's a team. <laughs> effort especially for the Red Wings it's mm-hmm. going to be a team effort Philip Zadina he's gotten a lot stronger yeah. he's gotten a lot faster and some big thing that we notice he is less self-reliance mm-hmm. so that might sound funny but this is what I mean I mean that he doesn't try as much to do it all on his own which yep. can be a detriment especially mm-hmm. when you don't have a lot of room on the ice mm-hmm. it's a fast game you lose the puck. It was a struggle for him last season. Yeah, board play. Um, yeah. So those are the things that we noticed last season, and we do think he's improved quite a bit. Yes. Not saying he's ready for the NHL yet, because I do still think he needs some development. It's a bold claim to say someone's ready. <laughs> I would say that he still does try to do too much at certain times, and that's a hard thing I imagine to break. I it's, mean, it's as a, a player, when you know you can go do it, it's a hard thing to break. Mm-hmm. And I do think he needs to work on his confidence a little more. He's a great player. He just mm-hmm. needs to. Hone his game. Exactly. Yeah, he's doing a he's doing a fantastic job though. Yep. Um and we'll link the video below from what we did last season. For sure. Um next up is Dennis Chalowski. Um he was one of the very highly touted defensemen that we have gathered. Um he had his first full season in Grand Rapids last season, so we got to see him at the prospects tournament again and in training camp again and kinda noticed, you know, he's gotten as far as far as his decision making. Um, on the ice, he's gotten a lot more decisive. That mm-hmm. was an issue he had last season a little bit, um, but he's been able to place the puck a little bit better, make those decisions a little bit quicker, yeah. um, which is really, really important. You know, in a game that if you're indecisive, you're going to get the puck taken. You're losing it. <laughs> <That's just laughs> it's going to get taken from Especially you. Especially someone, Someone's going to capitalize yep. on that for you. And he's gotten better. He is a good team player. Yes. He plays really well with others. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not like a it's all me kind of player, which not is great, especially yeah. with the kind of core that we have as a team. It's very, very important to just already have that ability so it's not too much improvement needed there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's He's more of a utility player, so he doesn't have that sharp two-way mind, I don't think. Right. Um, but as far as playing his position, he does a great yes, job. Yes, he's very good um, at his playing yeah, his position. When you need sure. defense and nothing but defense, you pop that kid out there, he knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say the area of improvement for him is still going to be he needs to get faster. His footwork needs to get more precise. Um, he spends a lot of time you know, with his turns and losing valuable time when trying yeah. to pass that puck out and get plays going. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something that he probably needs to work on, especially in his second entry year. Just get faster. Yeah. And last, certainly not least, and again, this is just a few of the guys that we wanted to talk about. We talk about all of them, but we don't have three hours. Right. <laughs> um, so Philip Roenick is probably one of the more <laughs> exciting things to come out of Grand Rapids development because <laughs> he has done so much in such a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been with us for a little while now, of course, but he has to be one of the most intuitive hockey sense defensemen that we've had come mm-hmm. through the system so far, so far, because there is um, Cider, who I'm really excited about. Yeah, as you know, we're excited. <laughs> um, Philip Hronik, 
Yeah. <laughs> Philip Ronick, it goes without saying, he's a very talented two-way defenseman. Mm-hmm. He can get points. He can drive the net. He can, you know, play his position, of course, yep. special teams. He just, I feel like he can do it all, mm-hmm. and I feel like he's got a for-sure roster spot with the Red Wings. Right, well, I'm sure he could goaltend if he wanted to. <laughs> so, sharp two-way player. His hockey sense is incredible. He's very versatile as well, mm-hmm. like I said. The two-way game, um, the special teams. He just, when he's on the ice, he doesn't play. He The reason I think he was noticed last year with the Red Wings, because he played some of the season last mm-hmm. year with the Red Wings, is because he plays higher than the yeah. AHL. Like, when he's on the ice, he's an elite player. He plays like he doesn't belong there. For sure, which yep. I think is how you have to play if you want to get pulled up. Exactly. Um, one thing we would say to improve on, and it's not the only improvement, of course, all these are just like, one thing we'd improve <laughs> on, is his attitude. Mm-hmm. Because he is such a good player, I think his attitude kind of can tend toward a an arrogance and maybe a, mm-hmm. I'm kind of higher than you kind of an attitude. I don't have time to deal with this kind of thing. Yeah, like, yeah. I know what I'm doing, you know, and that can kind of lead to being unteachable, uncoachable, which mm-hmm. Blashill does not stand for. So. <laughs> Steve um, would not stand Steve. for. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really think that's the attitude of a Red Wings no. player, for sure. So I think that that's one thing he could improve on. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, of course, I think that's a hard change, but he could do it. Yeah, really. Over time. Puts his mind to it. Yep, so exactly. um, we really went through those fast, <laughs> but there are so many other guys that we noticed in the camps that we're really excited about. Mm-hmm. So if you did not catch up on our podcasts from the week we were in Traverse City, I would go look at those. They're on podbean.com. We'll put a link. And iTunes. And iTunes. So mm-hmm. we'll put a link. Um, so listen to all those. It's kind of like a day-to-day summary of each of the games. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot more in-depth, I think, than what we did here. Right. Um, but, of course, we're trying to truncate it for you. Preseason hockey is not the end all because it's usually a lot of the prospects. It's a lot of the mm-hmm. guys who need some development. They're trying to see how they fare mm-hmm. on the ice against other players, against other teams. Trying them on, basically, just to see yeah, how they so, work with their um, All of these guys have so far played in preseason. Mm-hmm. Um, they've done, most of these guys have done really well for what they've been given. So it's not the end all be all. No. It's no. somewhere we, we can see their talent kind of progressing right. for sure. And they can also see their, their deficiencies too. Mm-hmm. When they're playing against, and even with the guys that are currently roster spots, they see where they need to improve as opposed to the younger guys who are coming from a different generation of player. Yeah. You know, seeing where how they match up, how they work well together. Um, the team the team is obviously, even in the short time that Iserman has been GM, and it's it's... Just to be fair, Ken Holland got these picks for us. Yeah. So Kenny did a lot of work on yes. the back end before Eiserman took over. But mm-hmm. under this new, especially with this draft season, the team is faster. The team is getting bigger. So over the next couple of seasons, I think you'll see a very fast Red Wings team, a very highly skilled Red Wings team, but also with the size I to match. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of differences in acquisitions. Like we got yep. Adam Ernie. That's a big, I think, a big change from someone that Ken Holland would have gotten. Yep. I'm going to add some physicality, going to add some points, of course. Great. Um, so let us know in the comments some prospects that you're really excited about. Let us know what you think about mm-hmm. the guys that we just talked about. Kind of a longer video, but we really appreciate you sticking it out with us. Um, and let us know your thoughts. Keep track with mm-hmm. our Podbean, our podcasts, and also look at our website. We just redid it. Woo! Yes. Looks awesome. <laughs> um, we're always Got doing hockey stuff. Up. Always doing <laughs> hockey stuff. So let us know where you are. If you want to discuss these prospects, we'd love to. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks so much for watching, as always. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye, guys.